Hello, welcome or welcome back. Today I want to answer one of your questions. Thank you so much for your participation. This is on the relationship between the law of attraction and the law of assumption and do you need to be in vibrational alignment to what it is that you want to manifest? I want to clear that up right now, so stick around. My name is Hedley Dorenzi. I am a qualified life coach and author. I am also super passionate about the amazing teachings of the law of assumption as originally taught by the wonderful Neville Goddard. It is the stories we tell that create our life. So if you want to change your life, then you have to change the story. And if you want to create the most amazing life, then you need to know how to tell the most amazing stories. And that is why I am here. Since discovering these teachings, I'm telling myself much better stories and I want to help you to do the same. If you would like further support with this, I am available for one-to-one -one coaching or if you just want to stay connected, I'm on Instagram. And I also have a free 21 day, set yourself up with the ultimate self-concept course all of those details are in the box below so check those out okay let's get into it so today I am answering one of your questions from the comment section on my channel thank you so much thank you so much for all your lovely comments and questions I really enjoy the interaction and it just makes the making of these videos so much more enjoyable because I know that they are actually being received and you're enjoying them so thank you this question comes from Isabella and I just want to say thank you, Isabella, for your question. I'll read it out. I have been learning about the law of assumption versus the law of attraction recently. If I may ask, what is the relationship between beliefs and vibrational alignment when manifesting? Do you need to be in vibrational alignment or do you just need to focus on believing? Thank you so much for the great content and thank you so much for the question. There is a lot of talk about the law of attraction and the law of assumption. How do they interrelate and are they connected and what's the deal? Well, well, I obviously, like many of you, watched The Secret all of those years ago, thanks to Rhonda Byrne, who was courageous and brave enough to put that documentary out there. She's a uh, fellow Australian woman. The law of attraction really did put the this manifesting kind of thing on the map. However, law of assumption is a little bit different, and I won't go too much into those differences today. For me, law of attraction served a purpose back then. I don't prescribe to law of attraction these days. I really am pure with the law of assumption. For me, they really are complete teachings and principles on their own. And of course, everything is connected and there are obviously overlapping and there's a connection between everything. However, for me, I just stay pretty clean and, and pure with the law of assumption teachings and in particular, uh, Neville Goddard's teaching. But I've done all sorts of things. I've studied under all sorts of teachers. I did a lot of work with Dr. Joe Dispenza as well. And there's some commonalities between law of assumption, law of attraction and everything that Dr. Joe Dispenza teaches. There is overlapping. You have to find what works for you. Remember, this is your movie. You get to decide the rules. So you decide what works for you, what's best for you. If there is one vibration uh, that would need to be, that you would need to align with in all of this, it's naturalness. It's the experience of naturalness. And I want to explain that a little bit more. So Neville talks a lot about thinking from the end as opposed to of the end. And there's a big difference. So when we think of something, we're thinking of it from our current state of consciousness. So I think I've used the example before. If you're driving a particular car and you'd like to drive another car, what we tend to do is think of the car that we would like to drive from the state, from the consciousness of the car that we're currently driving. So we're observing what it is that we want from a distance. Now never would say that's not what is going to manifest because as long as we are outside of something or away from something then what we're conscious of is we're just going to create more of that. If you want to bring something new, a new state of consciousness, then you must be in the state. You must think from that state of consciousness because consciousness is the one and only reality. So if you're thinking from that particular state of consciousness, that's the state that reality is going to reflect back. Reality is always and only reflecting back the state of consciousness that you are holding dominantly. And that's also another key word. You must be persisting with the new state of consciousness to bring it into reality because reality will reflect the dominant state of consciousness, which is why self-concept is super important because a lot of those stories that were embedded within our subconscious from a very early age, before we even knew that we had a consciousness that we were even, that we had a sense of self, those stories 
are so deeply embedded that they're the dominant stories and they're the ones getting reflected back in reality and we don't know why because we don't realize that those are the stories that are running they're the dominant stories running in consciousness which is why it's a good idea to look out into your reality from a, an observer's perspective and go okay well what's the quality of my reality is it favorable or unfavorable if it's unfavorable that's probably because you've got an unfavorable story running deep within your consciousness that you want to uproot, shine some light on and then change the narrative, rewrite that story. You don't need to know where it came from, you don't need to go into the story of the old story, you just want to write the new one. When it comes to thinking from the state of what it is that you want to experience, so that state of consciousness of that new reality, so thinking from where you want to be, you want to make it natural. So that's the key and, and Neville talks about if you fail, if there's any failure at this, the, the principles themselves, they are sound. There is no error in these teachings, they are law. So if we're not experiencing something or if something's not working in our reality, it's because there's an error in our consciousness and usually that's because we haven't yet connected to the naturalness of what we want to experience. I think in Law of Attraction there was um, a lot of talk around like you've got to be excited about this manifestation and really be in the joy, which is great, nothing wrong with feeling joyful and excited 100%, but to really get into the state of the new consciousness you want to be coming from a, a where it's natural where it's normal for you to be in that experience for example if you were wanting to create a new home you want to be in the home living in the home that you want to be in in your reality and so you put yourself using the power of your imagination you put yourself into that new home you continue to rehearse it over and over and over until that scene until that story becomes the natural dominant story in your consciousness and that's why rehearsal rehearsing your imagined acts in your mind over and over so putting your director's hat on and rehearsing the scene over and over and over until you've not only perfected it but made it feel natural because naturalness is the the vibration that you want to be aligning to when something is natural it's assumed that you already have it that you're used to it that it's in your reality therefore reality will eventually catch up to that consciousness pretty quickly actually if something is not is not natural to you let's say you want to win a large amount of money 10 million dollars that's always the one that comes to mind if you are in a in debt then suddenly having 10 million dollars is not going to be natural so you're going to have to use your imagination and rehearse a scene that implies you already have 10 million over and over and over until your consciousness until your subconscious is convinced that you have 10 million dollars because the brain the mind does not know the difference between what is imagined and what is seen in the physical world and that has been proved many times through by scientists um, including Dr. Joe Dispenza and another uh, sports psychologist Dennis Waitley who was one of the pioneers of this work back in the 80s he used this that that principle that the mind doesn't know the difference between what is imagined and what is real with the athletes that he was training for the Olympics so he had them train their race their sport over and over and over and over and over in their mind and what that did it fired the same muscles that fired when they were running the race in real time so this is super powerful stuff so if there's one thing that I can leave you from with this video it is to use your imagination to create the scene that you want to experience uh, and then rehearse it over and over and over and over in your mind until you are aligned with the natural feeling of already having it. So that would be the only vibration that you need to align with when uh, imagining a new reality for yourself. So I hope this has made sense and I hope Isabella this has answered your question. If not let me know and I'll do another video. <laughs> Please remember you are the creators of your reality. You are the superstar of your show. You are the producer, the writer, the actor, and the director of your movie and whatever you assume to be true will be so. So assume the best for you and assume the best for everyone in your movie too and you will have an amazing life. This is my wish for you. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video please feel free to share with family and friends and like and comment and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel I would love to have you and I think that's it. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. Bye.